My name is Andy Ruina. I'm a professor of theoretical and applied mechanics and also of mechanical and aerospace engineering at Cornell University. This robot is named Ranger. It was made in our lab over the past two years. It's a, what we call a four-legged biped. Four legs because it has one, two, three, four. Biped because when you look at it from the side, it looks like it has two legs. Uh, our big pride in this robot is that it just walks a little over five miles, which is further than any legged robot has ever walked. It's made for walking. The whole thing is controlled by four computers, each of which uses less than one watt. Uh, and also there's a whole collection of sensors uh, which are measuring this and that on the robot. There's a gyroscope which measures the overall angle of the robot. There's a magnetic sensor that measures how much the legs are bent. There's two more magnetic sensors that measure how much the outer feet and inner feet are rotated. Inside the foot, there's something, a little optical sensor that measures the distortion of the foot that uh, lets us know when the foot hits the ground. And then there are various uh, current and voltage sensors inside to keep track of the electric usage and the electrical power usage. The basic way this thing walks is that it falls down over and over again. So each step, the back foot pushes off because of the ankle motor. That propels the whole robot forward. The leg swings forward. The whole robot is balanced on, on the legs that are on the ground. And it's going to fall on its face, but for that the swinging leg comes forward and catches it. Now the swinging leg is on the ground, and the leg which was on the ground is going to swing forward, pushes off, and it swings forward and catches over and over again. So this is, this is walking as uh, falling and catching yourself uh, over and over again. Uh, this is what it did uh, thousands of times in order to walk uh, five miles a few weeks ago. conservative approach. I didn't want to, I only wanted to move one leg at a time to maintain stability. And uh,
We'd like to take a few minutes to show you one of the many concepts of operation where this technology could be employed by our men and women in uniform. As you can see, the effect of ADS immediately distracts and disrupts the group of activities. The ADS crew continues to engage the demonstrators, repelling them until the group moves away. Hey, Jeremy, you It's just very warm, uh, uh, and again, you know you don't want to stay there. You know you got to get out of the way. Designers are showing off the latest in military hardware, and at first glance, you might mistake this convention in London for a toy show. But these remote-controlled vehicles are anything but toys. The robot that we've made is actually built on a remote control platform. It's an expensive toy, but it's very durable. You can carry it on your back, and you can control it from a PDA, where you can see a map view, for instance, and then you can designate where it needs to go to. All the vehicles on display will be put through their paces in a series of military scenarios as part of the Ministry of Defense's Grand Challenge. Viewing an adversary from afar has proven to be a valuable combat advantage. This tiny helicopter can be piloted through virtual reality goggles and a small handheld joystick. Our approach really is to use a visual detection, looking at the targets essentially using a camera where you have the helicopter based hovering over the area of interest. And having that type of vision is sure to make combat missions a whole lot safer. John Belmont, the Associated...